All right. Very good. Say, do me a favor, say your name first and last and spell it out for me, please. So my name is Danelle Rose and it's D-A-N-E-L-L-E -L -L -E, and then Rose, R-O-S-E. Thank you, Danelle. Oh. Uh, and, and your title. I Sorry, I cut oh, off. Yes. So I'm the tourism marketing and communications manager for the city of Fredericksburg. Awesome. Well, thank you for, for, for talking with me today. We're obviously um, excited about restaurant week. Uh, so give us the, the, the details on restaurant week. When's it coming? I believe it starts uh, tomorrow if it hasn't started already. Uh, and, and who's participating and more importantly, what, people will find when they come to Fredericksburg for restaurant week. So restaurant week is, so it's, it's a biannual program that we do. It's a marketing campaign. So um, we do January every year and then also the summer. So um, July tomorrow starts this week's, this year's summer restaurant week. So Friday, July 26th through Sunday, August 4th. Um, every year we let the restaurants vote, which weeks they want to do in July. Um, so this was the, this is what they love to, they, they always seem to pick the last week of, of the month, which is really mm -hmm. cool. So um, several of them love to, to do that so that they're able to pay their rent for July and also August. Mm -hmm. That's good. It's good. Uh, now in terms of uh, uh, the specials, what makes restaurant week special? Is there a special menu? Is there a special set price? What, what can people expect? Yeah. So, um, Ever since, um, I mean, as we all know, 2020 just kind of changed everything. So um, with pricing and um, being able to get certain products by the restaurants, um, just kind of their, um, how they can get their orders and their local goods and stuff. Um, after 2020, we actually changed it. It used to be a three course meal um, set price of, you know, 24. And we always end with the year. So this mm -hmm. year it ends with like 24, 24, for an example. So, um, but after 2020, we changed it where we allow the restaurants to do whatever they want to do. Um, we want to be able to, for restaurants to be able to say, you know, I can afford to do this product for the week. And, you know, and we also too wanted to make it, and we've been asked restaurants to do this too, that, Yes, there are going to be people that go out and want to do the the wine pairings with a three course meal like the La Petite one sells out every year. Um, but there's also people that are on a budget. And so we've kind of asked that. And so a lot of coffee shops, um, Sweet Reasons in, uh, in Central Park does cupcake specials, just things that even families can go and grab and they feel like they're part of the restaurant week and also su supporting the community as well. So um, it's just a variety of, of different things. And um, with over 30 some restaurants this and businesses this, um, this year, um, there's a big variety of specials. So I, I think that would be then key to message out to the to people who are interested in coming though. It's not, it, there's not one size fits all. There's no right. set menu. There's no set fixed price. Uh, but you will find something special or unique during this restaurant, the summer restaurant week. Correct. Yep. Yeah. We want uh, people to be able to, to be able to take advantage of it for whatever budget they have. So, yeah. Um, why does the city do the, do this? I mean, this is uh, not uncommon. These, these types of uh, restaurant weeks, we, we see these in, in, in different areas. Um, what, how does this, how does this help restaurants in Fredericksburg and looking back, you know, d does this, you mentioned pay the rent, you know, for, for August, uh, for July and over the, August and September. Uh, are these types of restaurant weeks a boon for restaurateurs uh, and, and and do you have any I don't know specific examples about it like someone who was able to maybe build their restaurant grow their business beyond you know, just hanging on for another two months because we know things are tough right now for the restaurants and all small businesses um, so why does the city do this and and really um, how does it help the restaurateurs I think it's, it, you know, there's a variety of reasons why we do do it, right? Like we do it on a, a, a tourism aspect to, to highlight some of our local favorites. Um, we also do it for a lot of locals and residents. Um, you know, the 
we've always been big champions of just promoting things to locals. Um, they're our biggest advocates and our biggest advertisers um, just by word of mouth. So um, I think too, like, you know, on an aspect of, I mean, every single, if you think about it, a lot of memories are always like around food, right? And I think that's one of the things that we always, and every time we travel and every part of our weekends, we're like, where are we eating? So, um, you know, promoting restaurants and adding this week where, you know, locals and travelers and visitors can to take advantage of these, these prices, but it also gives everyone a, a nice promotion to like, try something new. Um, you know, people may not be apt to try, you know, Renato's and then, but they see it on the restaurant week, um, website and they're like, you know what, we've never been there. Let's try it this week. So I think, mm -hmm we've heard a lot of stories of people that use the restaurant week as date nights and, and going out with friends and, you know, sharing some wine and having a great meal and stuff. And I, and it just gives us really good sense of community to, to be able to promote that for the restaurants and the restaurants love it. You know, they yeah. always like laugh. They're like, we're about to get our butt kicked for the next 10 days. And, but at the same time, like they know, like if they put their head down and they sell all these plates, you know, I think it's just a really big, um, and like I said, you know, a lot, some of these restaurants look, especially the one in the winter when things are really quiet right after the holidays, we always run it over Martin Luther King weekend so that they get an extra kind of Sunday night. A lot of people are off on Mondays. So um, it really gives them that boost of uh, being able to pay their bills. Mm -hmm. You know, we all have our favorites. You know, I can name a few places that are always go to for, for us when we go downtown. Uh, but but you, you mentioned try something new. Are there new restaurants uh, to, to try maybe for someone who hasn't been downtown in a while? Are there one and two or one or two new places that have opened up in the past six months or so that 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 they might want to come try and, and try out? Um. Yeah, so uh, there's a couple of new ones. Uh, you know, if you're, it's not a restaurant, but Ironclad um, from Virginia Beach has opened a bourbon tasting room. It's um, a beautiful in the space. Former, yeah, beautiful. beautiful. Space. Um, so if you're looking for an excuse to, I mean, the vibe in that basement where the tasting room is is just amazing. So um, that they, we were really excited that they wanted to get on board and and do that. Um, that one's a great one. Um, if you haven't been to Suez Mahilas on um, Princess Anne Street, um, you know, she does Bahrainian. I mean, her pastries are just amazing. Her coffee's good. Um, she's doing chicken shawarma sandwiches for, you know, so some great, like really cool diversity food that we really don't get to experience. And, you know, and we're so glad that she opened here too. So, um, I'm trying to think of some other. New I'll put ones. in a plug for Always Flavored. I know they just yes, opened, yes. And, and I took my family there for. We had some lunch there. I met Rita when uh, she was still sending out. She's working at the Manassas Regional Airport, and she was sending out all the information for um, on behalf of the airport for their public meetings. And she was sort of their okay. point of contact. And and then you know I, we she said hey. I'm I'm finally opening up a space to sell my hot sauce. I'm like hot sauce. Who's selling? Where would you come up with hot sauce? But, but, but yeah. So we went down, and so she's on Caroline Street. So I had to put in a plug for her. She's great. Yeah, definitely. Um, and I mean, the news that she is now going to be in like two hundred and seven over two hundred seventy stores of Food Lion. I think is amazing too. That's a really big deal. Yeah, yeah. Coming from someone who who you know, had no idea made the hot sauce, she makes great hot sauce. Yeah, and, she does. Like it, <laughs> it's good enough to be in the in your groceries. So that's that that's cool. Um, yeah. You know, we're, we're talking about new ones opening up, and we're talking about you know restaurants that that are succeeding. But it is a tough time right now because prices, the dollar has shrunk. That that you get so much less for the dollar than you did two three years ago. And 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 for restaurateurs, have, have, they have felt it because prices on certain items they go up, they go down. Um, you know, and, and matter of fact, one of my advertisers um, and a great friend, um, Dixie Bones Barbecue, who um, who is in Woodbridge and actually used to have Barbecue Post Four Hundred One in the city uh, some years ago, uh, puts a 
pr uh, inflation, a price list, a wholesale price list in his menu. So his customers know uh, what they're paying for the food. And, and if anybody has any questions as to well, why, why does this rack of ribs or you know pork sandwich cost more than it did a week ago? Well, here's why. Um, but that being said, what's the mood of these small restaurateurs who, despite all these inflationary pressures, are still trying to serve their customers in a way that they always have. You know, I always think about that. Like yesterday we were delivering all the restaurant week packets to, you know, we give them posters and their passports and everything. And you, you know, you as a restaurant manager before too, like they have to be so tired, right? Like, you know, with the pricing, the cost of labor, even getting staff, I know, we had a couple restaurants this year that just couldn't even participate because they're like, we just don't feel comfortable with our staffing levels to even handle this restaurant week. And, you know, and that's scary too, because they need the money, right? And restaurant week is so great for them, but they don't want to give bad service and, you know, the quality of their food. So um, I think that's really hard too. I So I guess the overall is they're probably tired, but we all know how restaurant people are, they're resilient and they're the ones that are willing to fight. Right. And they're like going to get this done. And, you know, most of them, you can see they have just amazing teams that rally with them from the chefs and everything. So I think that's a, that's a positive note that they're always going to be willing to fight the fight. Yeah, that's a great point. Listen, I, I can't stress this enough. Go and support local, right? When you go and buy local, the yeah. money stays here in the community. It goes to pay people who live in our community. It is not shipped out of here and trucked out to New York City or some other corporate destination where they right. spend it wherever, however they want to. It supports business and, and jobs and people. More, most importantly, live here. Uh, so please go and and check out Restaurant Week and um, support these businesses who uh, are tired. They're clearly tired, and glad yeah. you, you said that. Uh, but they but they but they never stop striving to to provide great service and to serve our community the way they've always done. So for yeah. that, we appreciate it. Uh, Danielle, uh, Danielle, thanks so much for coming on and and talking oh, with us yeah. today. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. We. We get so excited when we get to promote all all the the amazing restaurants and the biz small businesses that we have. So, well, and, and I hope you keep us in the in the loop for for other things. This is a twice a year thing, and and you guys are always busy doing something. So we we do <laughs> we we do hope you keep us in the loop, and and we'll certainly help you promote. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for your, uh, everybody. Thanks for listening in on this call. And we'll write a story about this. We'll have this on our website, PotomacLocalNews.com. And of course, if if you uh, do not already get our daily email, it is free to get. Uh, just go to our website and click on newsletter there at the top. And if you are so inclined, if you want to support us, our us tired, hardworking journalists who continue to bring you local news, please consider becoming a member. Memberships start at $9 a month and you get 100% access to everything we put on our website. Have a great day.